people will go on Facebook to this very day into the Stargate groups and be like, I, I am a new fan. I just saw it for the first time. I bawled my eyes out. I was devastated. Yep. Um, yep. Did Did you and your son watch the episode together when it when it aired later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did. Was of it the course. big deal too? It was <laughs> a big deal. Like it was the rest I mean, of it was us. all a big deal. It's like well, you know, I, he may have said, "Why are they getting rid of him?" Yeah. <laughs> okay. But also, you know, my kids were raised on a set, so yeah, my true. kids have a really good sense of fantasy and reality. Okay. That's... More than the normal um, person, kid anyway, young person. So. So the dialogue yeah. proved to be uh, a challenge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you listen to the words, they're different. And, and so not only is the cadence, cadence different in the way that they wrote them, but you also realize that she's in, in, in imparting to Daniel um, clues and some of her knowledge without giving away what she's not by the rules allowed to give away. Yeah, so, she's walking on a minefield in yeah, her plane. Yeah, exactly. But she doesn't she doesn't play it that way. You don't sense that from her. Maybe a little bit in in threads at the end, but um but that comes as a surprise, which is nice because the writers did a great job with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I always yeah. wanted I always wondered how hot were those lights? <laughs> you know, I don't remember them being terribly hot. Really? But okay. Also, well, but you're I'm on a stage and the stage is a giant place. It's a big space. It's a big space. And so you might be in there in that concentrated moment while you're shooting. Um, but then you can go off and do it. So it's not the reality of it isn't like you're standing there for years and years and years. And also I'm really, really good at just tuning out the world as I need to turning out the noises on a set or anything that goes and using the lights or whatever it is that I'm given to, to work with to, uh, to put that into my character and whatever that means. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. How was it working with Shanks? You, you worked fabulous. You had, you shared one scene with Rick. Um, yeah, but it, Michael was really who, who Oma he was, was there great. for. The whole Daniel group was. was great. Yeah. But the whole group was great. They were so welcoming and so lovely. It was, which, which is really nice. Some sets you go on and people are like, yeah, hey, whatever, your turn. Um, <laughs> and others, and but Jeez. others, they were like, and I don't know what their interpersonal stuff was at all. I don't mm -hmm. know any of them off the off the set. Um, but they they were so they seemed so together and so cohesive. I think what you see on screen is a really wonderful troupe of actors that have worked together and know each other's ins and outs and, and all of that. And, and it comes across on the screen as people who care and support each other as the characters they're playing. It, you, you can fake it. You know, you hear of these stories of, yeah. of troops yeah. that are just like, you know, we really didn't get along, but when it was on screen, we made magic. Yeah. But That's, I think well, that is our job. I am an illusionist by trade. So that's your job. Absolutely. But it, it's I'm, nice if, like, you, like in your case with 30-something, you can actually, you know, um, fall in love with the people that you work with, too. So. No, no. It's, it's abs it, it's, it really is lovely. But also, I've worked with a, a few people. I've been very lucky, but there's few people that I hope I never, ever have to work with again. <laughs> of course. Of course. Very like simple. any of us in our jobs, it's like, well, I'm staying away from them, man. It's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, here he comes. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> you returned to the character uh, three years after Meridian. Right. Did you see that one coming? No, I didn't. It was sort of a nice little Benny that kind of came out of nowhere because... First of all, I love Vancouver where they shot. Mm. Love, love, love Vancouver. It's one of my favorite cities. And, you know, I, I mean, once again, I did this job because of my son. Mm. And I knew of it. And, and I don't know if I would have done it without him because I probably wouldn't have known the show and I wouldn't have known the characters. And, and I wouldn't have said, hey, you want to go hang out on the set with me, which is, you know, a lovely thing to do. So I, um, that it continued was, was great. And I love to see, I loved her as a character. She's very... Um, one of those indelible characters in my in my little bag of people I've carried along. Absolutely. And so to go back and revisit that, that's a lovely thing. And to be able to talk normally in this one. Yes. Robert yes. Cooper created a, a, an, ex, I think it was Rob, 
that created the threads. He gave an environment change that allowed you to right, have. But she didn't completely talk like a normal person the whole time. No. How big is the ocean? So you can't see the bottom or something like yeah. that. And yeah. But even like how she takes a waffle order. Right. <laughs> that's right. But that's actually, you can go online and, and, um, and find all the translations for those. That's funny. That's great. Mystery in the alley. I forget what that was. It's like eggs over easy or something. Those are those are real. Oh world yeah, translations. yeah, yeah. Oh, I my first my first job other than babysitting was waiting tables. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> in, in in New Jersey, a little place down the Jersey Shore called the Hut. Ah, were you good at it? I was really good at it. Oh, I sucked. I was really good. As a matter of fact, if you look here, you go. Okay, guys, here's a little thing. If you look during threads at the back of Oma's hair, there's a pencil in it for taking her orders. And that came from me working at the hut in New Jersey. I would keep my pencils in my hair. I, I, I had long, long, long hair. I knew they had braids or a ponytail, but most of the time it was a ponytail and I would keep my pencils in my hair. Well, because you always lose them. When you when you need a writing implement, you never have it. Totally. So that was always my problem too. So that that's the, I remember the pencil. You might that's have trouble cool. putting in your ponytail. <laughs> no, I kept them in my pocket. So. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.